Hey, today Kate here for the Best Buy blog, and in this video review, we take a look at the Google Pixel 6 Pro. A whole new look for Google's Pixel smartphones, and some features and functions to match. Well, it's about time that Google went back to the drawing board and figured out how to design a phone. Uh, you know, Pixel phones have always been kind of drab and really basic in their design. Google never went for any kind of pageantry awards until this time. So the Pixel 6 Pro is, it just bears no resemblance to previous Pixel devices. And that's not only by design, but I think it's necessary in this case because Google is fashioning this as a flagship phone. So this is supposed to compete with the best and it's supposed to do it in more than one way. So it's not just about the camera, it's about everything else too. To hammer that point home, Google made its own chip. So there's a system on a chip called Tensor that this phone runs on. So now for the first time, we have an Android phone where we have a chipset. Uh, so the hardware, the processor, the GPU is running in tandem with software that is also made by the same company. So this is the equivalent of iOS where Apple makes the hardware and software. Google has the software and hardware here too. It's unique. And for the most part, I would say that it works really, really well. Tensor is one of those uh, chipsets that you don't, you're not noticing everything it's doing uh, overtly. Like it's not something that, you know, it's, it's like appearing on your screen and it's telling you, hey, Tensor's doing this. It's one of those things that you notice over time and in sort of an overarching way. So for example, when it comes to language translation or when it comes to voice typing, uh, machine learning, AI, those things all definitely apply in this case there are different features where those things plug in. Uh, I'm gonna to get to a couple of them later, but for now, when it comes to anything to do with voice recording or language or anything, it just seems to work better than it did before. The voice recorder app is fantastic uh, and is something that if you are using it to record a lecture, an interview, anything that you might need to record, uh, this version of the app is gonna work much better and it does better on the Pixel 6 Pro. So even though there will be updates, for other Pixel phones, it's it, it just is more accurate and easier to manage on this device. And the reason and Google is saying that it's the Tensor chip that is largely powering that. Now the device itself, I have to say, when it comes to the design, so a 6.7 inch screen on this largest phone that Google has ever made, 120 hertz refresh rate. The Pixel 6 is a 90 hertz refresh rate, by the way, 6.4 inch screen there. And uh, this screen also has the higher resolution, the 6 Pro does. Uh, just the design, I mean, Gorilla Glass Victus on both sides. So there's some ruggedness here, same water resistance as before, so nothing really changed there. Uh, yes, the camera bump or strip, whatever you wanna call it on the back is very, very noticeable. It uh, doesn't allow the, the, the phone to lie totally flat, but that's okay. And you have a fingerprint sensor now on the screen as opposed to on the back. Wireless charging, USB-C, metallic edges on the side, eSIM. There's there's a number of things that are here. and But just generally speaking, despite the fact that, I mean, I'm not a fan of the curved edges on the display, a flatter screen would have been would have been better in my opinion. Uh, the cutout for the front camera is, is not that bad. I, I barely noticed it as I was using the phone. Uh, the speakers are okay too. All in all, this is just a very nice looking device. I. I when I saw the renders and I saw the photos, I figured, okay, this looks totally different from previous Pixel phones, but this is, it just feels different too. Uh, and so uh, if you're coming from a previous Pixel phone, I think you're gonna find that this is night and day uh, in a lot of ways. And speaking of which, that also brings me to uh, the camera. So the camera, of course, for Pixel phones is the stock and trade. We know that. Here, Google decided finally to change the hardware in it. So after using the same image sensor for the last few years, they finally went with something different on all three lenses. So you get a 50 megapixel uh, wide, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and 48 megapixel telephoto with a four times optical zoom. All of these are new image sensors. The main is the largest that Google has made. So it's one over 1.3 inches and it's at 50 megapixels. Yes, the number seems big, but just to point out, you're not actually shooting at 50 megapixels. So Google is pixel binning those pixels, combining four into one to make a 12.5 megapixel image. 
I checked this out by checking the metadata for all the photos that I was taking, and at no point was I shooting at the full 50. I was always shooting at 12.5, even in bright day daylight. And there's no option to shoot in like a high resolution. So if there is one, I didn't see it. Uh, and, and when I asked Google, I didn't get a response. So uh, I'm, going, I'm just assuming that the pixel binning applies to every shot, regardless of whether it's in low light or not. The reason why that's important is because by bringing in more light, Google's claim, Google's claim is 150% more light than the Pixel 5. That means you can shoot in low light even without using night sight. So night sight's great if you want to shoot in really dark situations, but if you've got decent lighting in a low light or night situation, just using the regular camera mode is going to be fine. Uh, I noticed this myself shooting a number of shots and was surprised to see that in most cases, night sight was totally unnecessary. So uh, it seems like I can't quantify the 150% claim. I mean, that's just a number Google threw out there, but generally speaking, from what I'm seeing, it is definitely a lot easier to shoot in low light in any of the modes, so long as you're using the main sensor. When it comes to the ultra wide and the telephoto, you're restricted because the light, the light capture is not the same for both of those sensors. So there is, it is going to be a bit of a struggle to, to, to capture the same scenes unless you're using night sight in those modes or in those lenses, I should say. So when it comes to the new modes, we have two. So motion mode actually is two modes in one. Action pan, you focus on a subject, you're panning, you, you, you lock them in and they're frozen in motion while everything else blurs behind them. Uh, and then you have long exposure where you're trying to capture movement and then slow it down so that it gives a more dramatic effect. Kind of like, you know, when you see the waterfall where the water becomes really smooth and creamy, uh, the same thing with traffic where you, you, you just basically create uh, light scripts. Uh, the problem with this mode, now both modes are cool. The problem I have with long exposure is that you can't control the exposure. So you, you can't control how long it actually lasts, which is to me is a bummer because if you were to use this, let's say for traffic, Traffic is one of those things where you, you need a longer exposure to, to create those, those strips. Uh, I tried it and uh, I wasn't really thrilled uh, with the results. It was okay, but honestly, it wasn't great. And, and so uh, this is a mode that I feel like Google is going to have to offer at least some kind of manual control over uh, so that the, the effect can be more dramatic depending on what you're shooting. Moreover, if you are going to use long exposure, it's probably best to do it on a flat surface or a tripod. It is really sensitive to movement. And so in some cases, you may capture the movement and it may look really cool. But if you're looking to keep something stationary in focus in the same shot, it may struggle. Google showed this with a, a couple of women who were in a photo with a, with a, a Ferris wheel behind them uh, when they first unveiled the phones. Even though the two women were in focus, the Ferris wheel was moving as the, mo you know, the motion mode is supposed to do. But in practice, if you were to try and do that shot, you would need to use a tripod and they would need to stay still. Otherwise, any movement, they're gonna blur. That's just, that's just what I noticed. And I noticed it even with stationary things like signs. So if I was shooting any kind of movement in my hand, even though I would capture the movement, unfortunately, the stationary object would also it would also seem like it moved too. I'm not gonna say too much about video on the camera because even though it's a little bit improved, it's not up to par with the iPhone or Samsung's phones, uh, largely because you don't have a whole lot of options and the quality is not quite there. So, you know, for a company that's really managed to make still photos look so good, it just hasn't figured out video yet. And I'm hoping that they do at some point because I'm not sure what's missing here. If you, if you can apply some of the same technology to, from the still photos to the video, you'd have it made, but for whatever reason, Google's engineers have not figured it out or they haven't prioritized it, I don't know. What I do know is that when it comes to battery life, which is very important and something very critical to whether or not a Pixel phone is viable or not, I'm happy to say that on the Pixel 6 Pro, I went a full day without a problem. There's a 5,000 milliamp battery in here, so there's really no excuse for not going a full day, but it's good to see that at least some of the issues that, are, that plagued previous Pixel phones do not necessarily apply here thus far. Could it get worse over time? Perhaps, but I'm thinking that it'll probably be like this for the duration of the time you're using the phone and might even get better if Samsung, 
pardon me, if Google can update the software so that they can optimize it even further. You can still have extreme battery saver and adaptive battery here. So you, you can take advantage of those features, but for the most part, I don't know that you're gonna need them because even with fairly heavy usage, I had no problem going through a full day. And that's my review of the Pixel 6 Pro for the Best Buy blog. I'm Teddy K. Thanks for watching.